Linked lists versus arrays. Arrays are stored in sequential memory, whereas linked lists elements can be stored anywhere in memory. The benefit of linked lists over array is when adding or deleting an element from the linked list, we do not have to reallocate any memory. So when adding or removing an element from the linked list, it's big O of one. Unlike adding or removing an element from an array, which when you delete an element from the array, you would have to shift over every element in the array to be in the proper spot of memory. A negative aspect about linked lists is that since it is not in sequential memory, it takes big O of n to sequentially access an element, where an array element is in a specific memory address and we can directly access that element, so it's big O of 1. Search or sequential access in either an array or linked list is big O of n. C Sharp and Java both have linked list classes, and they both implement the linked list class as a doubly linked list. The following example is an example of a singly linked list implemented in C Sharp. So, in the basic implementation of a singly linked list, all we have is a header property of type node and a couple of methods to edit the list. So, let's check out our node. Here's our node class that will be used for the header and all sequential nodes added to the list. The node class consists of essentially two properties, the data property and the next node property. The data will store the data for each node. In this case, we're using ints, so it will store an int in a single node. And the next node will store a reference to the next node in the list. And it is also of type node. Here are the basic getter and setter methods for the node class. Here we have get data and we return the data of the node. Here we have set data and we set the data of the node. In this case, we take in an integer data and we set the data to this object's data. Our get next node method will return the next node on this object and our set next node will take in a node and set it to this object's next node. And then we have the constructor of the node, which takes in data, in this case an integer, and sets it to the node's data property. And that's the basic setup of a singly linked list node. Now let's look at some methods of the singly linked list. Here we have add at start. Add at start is big O of one, AKA constant time. When we add a node at the start of the list, we first take in our data and create a new node. And then we set the next node of the newly created node to the head of this list. After we set the previous head as the next node in the list, we can now set this new node as the new head of the list. This takes constant time or big O of one because there's no memory allocation and no searching through the list. Our next method is delete at start. Delete at start is also big O of one, AKA constant time, because when deleting from a linked list, you do not need to shift the elements like an array. To delete at start, we simply set the head of the list to the next node, which could be either another node or null. The next method is add at end. The adding process of add at end is considered to be big O of one, because the actual adding process takes constant time. But to actually add an element to the linked list, you have to loop through the linked list. And searching through the linked list is big O of n. If the head is null in the linked list, we simply take the data, create a new node, and set it to be the new head of this linked list. Otherwise, if the head is not null, we must get a reference to the current head of this linked list. To find the end of the list, we use a while loop starting with the head of this list, setting it to the current node, and we continue to get the next node until we reach the end of the list, which is when next will be equal to null. So once we reach null, we'll break out of our while loop, and we will have the last item in the list. Once we have our last item, we simply take our last item and set its next node equal to a new node taking in the data that was sent in. 
Another basic method on the length list is the length method. To get the length, it's big O of n, unless we keep track of the length throughout all our methods as a property of the length list. In this example, we are not keeping track of the length on each method, so here's how we would get the length of the list. First, we get the head of the list, set it to our current node, then we implement a while loop, and if our current node is not null, then we add one to the length of the list. After we add one to the length of the list, we get the next node and set it to our current node, and we go through the entire list until we reach null, which will be the end of the list. Once we reach the end of the list, we return the length that we counted. Search is very similar to length, as in we take in data and we search through the entire list until we find an element. And so it is also big O of n. So we take in our int data, we set head to the current node, and then we use a while loop and loop through all of our nodes starting at the current node or the head. If the current node's data is equal to the data that we are searching for, then we can return our current node. Otherwise, to continue to loop through the list, we set our current node equal to our current node dot get next node, so the next node in the list. If we could not find the specific data, we simply return null. And that's all there is to the basic implementation of a singly linked list in C-sharp.